you have your your time where you're like, oh my God, I've been doing this forever. But what keeps us like so excited to keep doing it because we keep learning new things and how you can help create products that actually make people's lives better. I am unwilling to give up that I will start over from scratch as many times as it takes to get where I want to be. I want to be. You just want to make sure you will get knocked down, but just make sure you don't get knocked out. Knocked out. So your only choice should be go focus on what you can control. 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 Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Kara Golden Show. Join me each week for inspiring conversations with some of the world's greatest leaders. We'll talk with founders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and really some of the most interesting people of our time. Can't wait to get started. Let's go. Let's go. Hi, everyone. It's Kara from the Kara Golden Show, and I'm so excited that I have our next guests here. We have Britta and Suveen here from Aquas. Yay, I said it right. (laughs) founders, husband and wife, a team, and so excited that you guys are here on our show for everybody to hear just a little bit more about your story. And for those of you who are not familiar with Aquas's amazing, amazing product. So the K18 hair product and the was, well, really the biometric product was really what put you guys on the map. I mean, is that kind of fair to say that? Uh it's going to put us on the map. Uh, Aquas, the hair towel was the first one. So that's kind of what became iconic over the last five years. So yeah, we got two hair products. Yeah. I mean, I feel like just everything that you guys have done is just, I don't know, like, I just feel like it's really revolutionized hair products and just the restoration and the protecting of your hair. It's awesome. So the bio mimet metric. I'm not going to pronounce this correctly at all, but that is the treatment that is just now launching, right? Yes. It's just about launching uh, in the first quarter of 2021 across professional channels, both in US and globally. And what we've been kind of doing over the last two years is essentially test marketing it. We started in Australia and then we were test marketing it in US just before COVID happened. And we got some amazing responses hairdressers, colorists, anyone who kind of tried it, they fell in love with it. They, for them, it was like, wow, this is not just kind of repairing my hair. It's actually kind of bringing it back to kind of a near version strength. It's like hair feels like new. It has the bounce, it has strength, it has smoothness, uh, something which people hadn't experienced before. And that was incredible. That's amazing. So take us back to the beginning. How did you guys end up getting here and starting this amazing company? Uh, it well, all had to do with Britta. <laughs> well, well I, I started Aquas literally 30 years ago in 1990. I always grew up with long hair, found that drying hair is just a hassle and a half. No one really enjoys that experience. It just takes too long. The cotton bath towel was the only thing that existed at the time, and it didn't work. Leaves hair drippy wet, falls off, just bad experience. So I was in the ski industry and exposed to all the first wicking fibers that wick sweat away from your body used as under layers of clothes, base layers to wick sweat away. And I just had my aha moment that there had to be a technology that would dry hair faster, be lightweight and be a better experience. And I sought out the company in Japan who invented these first wicking fibers and worked with them to design a towel that would dry hair quickly and gently. And that was uh, Aquas was born. So that was 1990, and then we patented. I also then wanted something that no matter what, you could do downward dog, yoga maneuvers, and it wouldn't fall off. And so I created the patent and patented the turban shape with a button loop, so literally could do anything. And it really was, you know, fast forward decades. (laughs) And, you know, with the onset of social media, I mean, I would see people and they would tell me how much they, before social media, how much they love and can't live without Aquas. But once you see social media and crowdsource and reviews where you have, you know, thousands and thousands of people saying, not only does this towel save me time, but it's saving my hair. My hair is less frizzy, my hair styles better, my hair smoother. So honestly, that was Sabine. He was the one who dove and he's like, Britta, how's your, your towel actually making hair better? And my answer to him was, well, probably women are spending less time blow drying, less heat. And that's true. But this is a man who <laughs> the day I met him, he gave me a book called The Biology of Belief, how 
cells talk to each other to prove their spirituality. So he wanted to go deep into the science of how the towel works. And he started really getting every book on the chemistry of hair, the physics of hair. So our big aha and learning is understanding the biology and how our hair works. And once you do that, you really realize that how we care for our hair between our products and our very habits work against us getting our best hair. So that was what got us really like, you can imagine, you, you know, being an entrepreneur, you have your your time where like, oh my God, I've been doing this forever. But what keeps us like so excited to keep doing it because we keep learning new things and how you can help create products that actually make people's lives better. And I'm going to let Sabine kind of go into the science of what we did because that led us not only from you know, the towel to what it was doing to dry hair quickly and how that, what it meant to reinventing hair care and learning all about biomimetics. So it's biomimicry, mimicking what biology did. So to actually repair hair and that's the wet products we're going to talk about. So before we go there, I want to, I want to just stop and highlight like a couple of things. So you had no experience in the hair care industry other than the fact that you had hair had a lot of right? <laughs> and you had a lot of hair and you know, you definitely, you were curious, right? So you dug in and, you know, started to figure out exactly if other consumers would be interested in this. How do you bring something from another industry? So a lot of key points that I talk about all the time, like I think that it doesn't matter what category you're in, that curiosity is such a driver. Like, it, you know, I think it's really a North Star for so many people that are thinking about being entrepreneurs in any category. It's like, you've got to have curiosity. If you're not curious, like, you probably won't be like, you're not going to be digging this like career at all. And then I also love the fact that you had no experience that something that I talk about in my book that I just launched is, you know, really that I was willing to try that I'm no different than anybody else. But I just kept I was curious, and I was willing to try. And I think that that is the story. And also the fact that you learned from other industries. So oftentimes, you know, we think like, oh, we got to go talk to everybody in the hair industry or the beverage industry. And the reality is, is that those people, they just don't have the vision or they don't have the resilience or curiosity that you have to like solving this problem. And then you mentioned so many things in that brief moment that you were just talking also about the customers and you were hearing early on from the customers that they loved your product. And ultimately, I mean, that that is such a key driver. Now, our brand is 15 years old and that's a key driver today that I talk about. It's like they gave me the energy and the confidence to actually keep going when so many other people around me were saying they doubted me. They made my doubts even bigger, but I kept going back to what does the customer think? And so I think like you just really spoke to this. So so you guys start to innovate in two other categories. And Savine, that's where you really jumped in, it sounds like, and your curiosity. Oh, curious <laughs> and science basis guy, like deep, deep, deep. I love cool. it. Kara, you actually kind of said it, uh, curiosity, and uh, you don't have to be from the industry. Think about your own self. Uh, uh, you created the first flavored water. I, I happen to be in the beverage industry. I used to work with Anon. And at that point in time, we were kind of, a, we had flavored waters and it was one of the most challenging categories to work with. And mm -hmm. none of us really kind of sorted it out. You sorted it out by not being in the industry, which I can, mm -hmm. uh, which when you kind of look at in the context of hair care, look at how big this industry is. And you've got tens of thousands of products all over. Yet it's all about that. Then hair care, could not be, should not be a struggle. It's a daily struggle with women across the world. The amount of time, the amount of effort, the amount of money, the amount of products you put into hair. And yet that hair, that hair happiness is so limited. People are always still looking for the next product. Like, that's, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They're just looking for the next product because it's not working. And the reason yeah. for that is the hair cane, there's been no innovation really in the hair cane industry in the last hundred years. It's like the skincare of the nineties mm -hmm. where it was all about repairing or masking the damage. Fast forward today, all our hair care habits and our hair care products and routines have only made our hair more and more needy for products. And we that's what we live by. And that triangle has to kind of a change. It's not about how do I create another better. The, the world does not need another shampoo or a conditioner. 
what we kind of need to is take a step back and see what's hair care fundamentally about. It takes, I mean, let's say in every six to eight weeks or 12 weeks, you color your hair or you kind of chemically treat your hair. And then in about in during that period, you're probably washing and drying your hair about 20 times. Between these two, they're compounding the damage to the hair. So every time you're kind of washing and drying your hair, it's a really bad canvas. And there's not much you can really kind of do with that canvas. Mm -hmm. That's a struggle. So what looked like a hair towel was actually the most essential tool after shampooing your hair that Brett had created. And by simply drying it right, wicking the water out at just the right time, does it matter to everyone? Probably no. Does it matter to you if you are coloring your hair, chemically treating it to your hair? Absolutely, yes. Does it matter to you a lot if you are in Europe? Probably no. It doesn't matter to you a lot if you're living in the US? Yes. That's that's because the hard water and the hair habits and the, and our hair diversity in the US creates the perfect condition for damaged hair. And that's where the hair towel was working. So while that was kind of happening, what the hair towel was doing was it was giving you strength not by adding something to your hair. It was giving you strength from within. It was solving the problem of frizz, not by adding a frizz serum, but by actually making the hair less frizzy inside out. And that's what kind of got us to kind of a really kind of a take take the next deeper dive. So before we go on the next deeper dive of the next step of that, let's get yeah. a little bit of the science as to why, what the, the difference is. So the fundamental thing, and this was what shocked me, once we started understanding the physics of hair and how hair works, we realized that how we wash our hair is fundamentally backwards and not supporting us getting our best hair. If anything is damaging our hair and causing us to need more products and our hair to become more needy. So hair is made of keratin. It's the same thing our fingernails are made of, mm -hmm. also keratin. And you think mm -hmm. how strong your nails are when they're dry. You put them in water for just a little bit. They get soft and pliable. So the same thing happens to our hair. The minute it gets wet, it starts to absorb water. It stretches, it swells. The swell Swelling pushes the cuticle layer. So on the outside of our hair, protecting the inside are layers of cuticles like tiles on a roof. And we have, you know, five to 11 layers, depending on the hair type that swells. And that's what causes each hair strand to snag on the other one and why our hair tangles in the first place. So what do we do? Mm -hmm. We then pour conditioner in our hair, yeah. which kind of works like spackle. If you've got holes in your wall, you fill those holes with spackle same thing like what conditioner does is it fills in those areas of those upraised cuticles so your hair feels smooth, but it's not fundamentally helping the hair to lay flat. It's keeping that water trapped inside. So one hair hack I tell everybody is like wash your hair at the end of the shower, not the beginning. And 95% of women will and people, actually men wash I found mm -hmm. wash at the end, but women, we wash our hair in the beginning because when we think we put that conditioner on and it's conditioning our hair, it's not, it's a placebo yeah. thing that makes our hair feel better. But once you rinse it out and you go out in humidity, again, humidity, water makes your hair go frizzy. That's fascinating. Exactly. Right. So that's literally why the towel was reducing frizz and making hair smoother because by removing that water, the hair swelling reduced, the cuticle started to lay flat, and the hair is smoother from within, strong from within. As Savine said, you know, we, we also wanted to go the next step, because once you realize that women, we also are, we want to be able to express ourselves as we want. So I want my blonde hair of my youth. As I get older, it gets darker. So I lighten my hair. Or if you're graying, you might want to darken your hair. Or let's say you just want to express yourself and have pink hair or blue hair or whatever. So we're using chemicals. We're using bleaches. Or, we're using or chemicals or perming and doing things to our hair that really fundamentally destroys it. We're breaking it. Yeah. So Sabine went on the next path, which is what led us to the biomimetic hair care and understanding, like, how do we repair hair after you guys break it and damage it? Yeah. This was how many years ago did you guys actually branch out then? So we've been working on it for about close to about five years. And we've had scientists who've been actually working on this in the same space for about 10 years. So actually uh, back to 2006. Yeah, our, yeah, our, our hair more, scientists more we are, are partnered yeah. with has been working on <laughs> since 2006. And, and like Britta said, if you kind of look at it the last five years, the only innovation that has happened in the hair care has been bond repair. You're compromising the hair within the hair. If you kind of look at it deep in, it's like thousands and thousands of cross woven ladders. So you have the, the rung of the ladders and you have the side of the ladders. The rung of the ladders 
is what you call the disulfide bonds. And that's where the bond repair products kind of came in. And one of the like the, so the biggest category that's really been in hair care in the last five years, they started patching these, the, the rungs of the ladders. That alone kind of helped. But when hair gets damaged, it's not just about the rungs of the ladders. It's the sides of the ladders also that get broken. So mm-hmm. trying to kind of keep them together has no meaning. You have to repair the sides of the ladders. And that's where the answer was not cosmetic chemistry. We started basically looking at biotechnology. But also this technology glued the hair together and then it washed out. So yeah. it wasn't lasting. And then as you do it over and over, it doesn't work anymore. So we had to, Sabine really worked with these scientists to rethink it. He started looking at the DNA of hair itself. That's wild. Yeah, but what we did was we mapped the whole keratin genome on the hair, similar to what the the human project for DNA mapping has been. So once you kind of understand that and you start actually testing every sequence, I mean, as a structure of the hair, you basically recreate how nature creates hair. And that's what we accomplished. And using that, we created a platform which can allow you to express your hair in any way you want, yet you are able to reverse the damage and take hair back to its natural strength, natural aspect. You know, we all have known what hair was like before we started damaging it. What if you could get that hair back again? This has been a yeah, that's amazing. And without weighing it down. So you had established a brand in something. I mean, were you in hair salons like with the hair, you know, and so that was like this. I mean, that's another challenge that you're dealing with, right? Because you're going up against the big guys, right? And kind of competing with the, the professional. So how did you do that? I mean, or how are you doing that? It Again, finally, everything goes back to how they feel about it. Mm-hmm. Like you said. The industry is big. There are tons of big brands. But ultimately, it's the hairstylist and your colorist who touches the hair and they feel the difference. And that difference is what actually makes all the difference to how you yeah. feel about it and how your customers client feel about it. So we kind of are going back to some of the best colorists internationally and in the U.S. and hairstylists. They've been trying it out. And they come back and say, wow, I've never tried anything like this in 20 years. This hair has never felt so, so great. And... They are your influencers. They are your advocates. And they are the ones who kind of are going out to their clients and saying, look, you must try it out. We've had some, we can't name any, some other celebrity colorists who, who, be, who are using it on every celebrity, despite the fact that they are formally advocates of other big brands. But secretly, it's like they're sending this out to, <laughs> to everyone out there. And that's what's kind of making the difference. And that's what's kind of getting us, the colorists, the stylists, and then the big, you know, the partners who, who distribute the salons, they're coming and becoming our partners. We're looking at rolling it on about 15 countries, including U.S., in the next four months. That's amazing. From Marin County, because you guys are based in Marin County, just another amazing disruptor that's that's coming from this area. That's so great. So how do you see hair care changing within the next five years? I mean, what do, what do you think is kind of the key thing? for salon owners or consumers? I mean, where do you see that for your brand? Kara, look at this. Three years back, if you kind of walk into a a store, everything was always about repair or a salon. It was everything was about hair repair. or I mean, it looked better. It's kind of Mm cosmetic-y. First time, if you kind of look at it this year or like about 18 months, it's been about healthy hair. The conversation has shifted from styling to repair to healthy hair. Mm-hmm. Fast forward three years, what I would love to kind of see is, is first of all, the number of products that are there on the shelves come down by one third, I think. Mm-hmm. Because if fundamentally, if our hair is becoming healthier, then there should be less need of more and more products, mm-hmm. less need of more damaging routines in our hair. Less is more works for hair more than anything else. And that's what we need. Less toxicity into hair, less toxicity into our environment. It's more sustainable for the environment yeah. and more sustainable for yeah. our hair. Honestly, I wash my hair once a week and look, I'm pretty smooth. I've not used conditioner on my hair in four years. And I've never been better. I do less and it just responds better. And I think, you know, it's going through COVID, especially, you know, everybody's spending a lot less on makeup. And more on skincare and wellness. That's been a trend before COVID and it really came home during COVID. And so that's where we're all about, like, let's stop covering up and doing things to make our hair just look better. But then we're struggling with it because it's actually not better just and that's not sustainable. So how do we actually really just give people stronger, healthier hair so they have a better base to work with? 
And the same is true for the salons too. Mm-hmm. As we kind of go, come out of the COVID, you got half the seats. As a salon professional, you have half the number of seats. You have to kind of manage it in less time. Nobody's time for those 45 minutes, 60 minute treatments. What mm-hmm. our salon professionals need at Prox that work fast. This works in just four minutes. That are less number of Prox. And finally, that are experiential by themselves so that when you use it on your client, the client says, my God, I want this. You don't have to kind of spend time trying to sell it. We all talk about how salon professionals are not great salespeople. That, that's wrong. We are kind of giving them. Well, they're not good salespeople, but if the product work. works, then they sell it. <laughs> they sell it. They sell it. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. selling. It's just like, you have to have this. I mean, so. To give you an example, just before, just before COVID, one of the top salons in New York, who's used to kind of stocking hundreds of products of other top brands, they came back to us. They said, look, we have two of your products. They were half of our retail sales. So the brand is K18 Biomimetic Hair Science. Right. And K18 is the peptide that we've patented. So when Sabine was talking about the, the ladders and the amino acid chains and mapping the DNA, we mapped every possible sequence of keratin to find the one particular peptide that actually can go in and repair, renew that hair from the inside. So the future for us is that platform of being able to do different things with your hair. I mean, our bodies are made of proteins, which are all different, you know, combinations of amino acids to get different things. And so there's a whole platform where we've actually now in clinical trials been able to have products that actually help to curl hair from within. And that's, lasting and more naturally based. Even our K18 products are pH is closer to where your hair wants to be. It's not the high crazy levels. It's not a lot of heavy product. It's fewer ingredients that work faster and work better and are more sustainable. So that's what's like really a super exciting for us is just really better, fundamentally better hair based on science and based on biology. Ultimately, the only reason it should matter is if it saves as a client, as a customer, if it saves me five minutes of my time, if it's kind of saves some of my frustration, mm-hmm. if it saves some of my effort, then you can you have more time to yourself. And and hair is one of the biggest sources of frustration on a daily basis. So if we can kind of give totally. the time and money, I think we can have done our job. That and that's and, fundamentally what matters. And then on the other side, it's also the thing that makes you feel good. If your hair looks good that day, yeah. you feel pretty good and it gives people yeah. literally more confidence. There are people like you, you can ask, and we ask these kinds of questions to people. Have you ever not gone to a party or an event because your hair didn't look good? And yes, the answer is fundamentally across the board, pretty much yes. I, we have people who didn't go to a wedding because they couldn't get their hair done, you know. And how do you guys get the word out? then about your about your product i mean what is the biggest you know marketing for your product advocacy i mean you said that very early on it's mm-hmm. all about somebody falling in love with it the right person falling in love with it and they speak when you fall in love you speak about it yeah. and that's been what's kind of a grown the hair towel yeah. you can imagine when we kind of started with that that's what's kind of grown the hair towel from the base of say where you were selling hundreds of thousands to millions and that's what will help us kind of get the K18 out. And if we really kind of think of our community as as a center of our of growth of the brand and the business, and kind of stay solely focused on them, we believe we have a we have a future, and we have a great future. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's how I first heard about it too, just through friends, and like they love the product, and it's an amazing, amazing product. So, do you have different formulas for colored hair versus non-colored hair? I always hear about you know that's. I mean, is that reality for these hair care products? I know that's uh, something that I always hear talked about. I have no idea if it's true or not. So once again, over there, the whole micro segmentation that's happened in hair care industry, damaged hair, this hair, that way. Fundamentally, that's incorrect. Hair is made of keratin. Uh, yes, if you have curly hair, if you have curly kinky hair, your hair structure is slightly different, but it's still the same. We or we have overemphasize the need of these micro segments, colored hair, non-colored hair. And I think I think that's where we fundamentally need to kind of move into product architectures, which are about more universal and can take care of hair across ages, across generations and hair types. And that's what we teen is. It works as well uh, on someone who is a Caucasian hair and is kind of a bleaching her hair to as well as someone who is who's who has curly kinky hair, who's straightening her hair or perming hair. Mm-hmm. And that's what we fundamentally believe in. That just like the color of your skin does not matter, so should not the texture of the hair. 
and how do products really become inclusive? So yes, we're looking at working out some iterations, but the idea is create hero products which can which have a more universal appeal than creating small incremental products which really kind of don't solve a problem. If it doesn't solve a problem, we should not have it. So yes, you have color is a big part of our expression. We got you are we have a product there. Straightening is a big part of the expression, and again, that's ma- managed by toxic chemistry. We kind of are working on that. Perming, making hair wavy, those are big parts of expression. So the big swells where expression changes. That's where we kind of are looking at how do we kind of really enable that without damaging hair. And even if there's some damage, can we reverse that damage and bring back hair? But right now, there's just one product for both colored as well as it's non-colored. Okay. I think the big thing we want to do is also help educate people to understand the biology of their own hair and how their hair works. Because once you fundamentally understand that better, then it's easier for you to maintain and realize some of the things you might do from one time to the next and how it affects it, how to counteract that. So for example, like, you know, we just need to cleanse our hair and Focusing at the roots, you know, at the bulb of our hair to make sure the the follicles don't get minimized and have the hair stop growing out of that follicle and the hair thinning. Pretty much, you know, that is a universal thing. We just need to cleanse and gently cleanse without stripping too much of the natural oils. You know, when you start to understand your hair, you may need, you know, depending on hair type, a little bit more of, of to be able to, you know, comb it through or whatnot. But we're fundamentally trying to help people just understand it better so they can get the best result they want. Which in this case means that if I'm treating my hair, if I'm kind of, which is where the KT treatment comes, then I need to protect that hair at home. So mm-hmm. you have a daily regime of products that work to take care of the hair at home. So the whole idea is focusing on the triangle of washing, drying, and chemical damage. Yeah. If you can kind of, uh, if you, when you are at the salon, you kind of are damaging your hair the most. So you need the most kind of intense treatment. And then you need to take care of that hair when you're back at home. And that's where the hair towel or the hair care products that complement it at home work together in giving you your best canvas. Or something like, like the dry shampoo thing. You know, I use a dry shampoo in an emergency situation, which I don't have a lot of anymore because I was using them when I traveled, which I'm not. And I'd be like, can I get a week on my travel, can I shampoo on Sunday, travel, get through media meetings and get through the whole week. And I would cheat if I had to like on a Thursday, Friday and do a little dry shampoo at the root to give it some lift and not look greasy. However, dry shampoo is really not great for your, the follicles of your hair, where your hair grows out, it clogs it up. So then I'd be like, okay, but it's, it's not a replacement of washing your hair. And I think some people misunderstood that. It's like, oh, I can just like clean my hair with a dry shampoo. Like that's not yeah, what it's it was for, you know. So just know that you create buildup when you do that. So then maybe you need a detox shampoo at that point because you've been doing this. What have you been doing? Do your products have a lot of silicones in them? Are they coating your hair that you need to kind of cleanse it deeper and just to understand how to manage it better. So where do people get your products now? If somebody wants to order them and try them out, where's the best place? The hair towel is available all across online in the uh, with the best of the best seed retailers, both in US and globally. The K18 product is was still recently available on our site. We kind of uh, taken the site down because we are working on the branding and the formal launch of the product. So it should be available December on 1st December again. 1st, and then from there, salons both in U.S. and trashy. So obviously the easiest place for everybody is our website, aquas.com or khair. K18 hair. K18hair.com. K18hair.com is for the K18 Biomimetic Hair yeah. Care Repair and aquas.com. And then in Sephora, we're in Sephora globally, um, Australia, Mecca, out of the U.K., Tmall, Tmall yeah. in China. Hong Kong, uh, Joyce, Joyce uh, Hunt Group in UK, Selfridges UK, Sephora in Europe. So yeah, I mean, and Sephora in Middle East. So That's amazing. Very, very cool. And the two of you have uh, built this company, like I said, you know, together, which is just amazing. Another husband and wife team and great example. I love, love seeing that. Very cool. Are you guys on social? How do people reach you and follow you and see what's going on? Britta uh, is. I'm Britta Cox. I think Britta underscore yeah. Cox on Instagram and awesome. Facebook. And, and I'm Suveen Sahib. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. So 
Awesome. Well, definitely, if you guys liked this episode, definitely give five stars and and share it. And we're so excited that you guys came on today to talk a little bit more about this. And we'll definitely be looking for all those new innovations that you guys are talking about and definitely buy this product, you guys. It's amazing. And I'm really excited to see what happens more with uh, the K18. So the biomet, that whole line is just amazing. So very, very cool. Thank you. You're an amazing champion. Yeah, you're yeah, No, I love it. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And, and we'll talk to you soon. Before we sign off, I want to talk to you about fear. People like to talk about fearless leaders, but achieving big goals isn't about fearlessness. Successful leaders recognize their fears and decide to deal with them head on in order to move forward. This is where my new book, Undaunted, comes in. This book is designed for anyone who wants to succeed in the face of fear, overcome doubts, and live a little undaunted. Order your copy today at undauntedthebook.com and learn how to look your doubts and doubters in the eye and achieve your dreams. For a limited time, you'll also receive a free case of Hint Water. Do you have a question for me or want to nominate an innovator to Spotlight? Send me a tweet at Kara Golden and let me know. And if you like what you heard, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. You can also follow along with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Kara Golden. Golden. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.